Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the first of our two Bicentennial Ambassador events. I'm Sean Daly, Associate Vice President for Alumni and Parent Engagement and Annual Giving. And I am the parent of two Kenyan students, proud parent of two Kenyan students. I have a son, a math major in the class of 2024, so he will be graduating this spring. And I have a daughter who is a junior sociology major um, who will be graduating um, the following year. So a couple of big years for me um, coming up. Um, you, so I am Sean Deal. You are Bicentennial Ambassadors. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight. I'm going to tell you more about that uh, program in a minute. Um, one quick housekeeping item. If you would please update your display name to include your class year. So you can do that by hovering over your square and your little Brady Bunch box, um, clicking on the three dots and then selecting rename. So if you could add your class year uh, to that, to your display name, that would be great. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna invite our president of Alumni Council to introduce herself. Hi everyone, I am Kimberly Brown Sword, uh, formerly Kimberly Qualls until two months ago. Um, so I am the president of Alumni Council. I just started uh, as officially president this fall. Um, I'm very excited to be leading the council through the bicentennial and excited to work with everybody who wants to get involved to make sure that alumni have the opportunity to really enjoy this experience. So thank you for being here tonight. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. I'm going to give you a quick um, overview of our um, content tonight. So we will... Um, uh, give an overview of the Bicentennial. Um, so I'm going to share a, a PowerPoint presentation with you that walks us through plans to date, um, how we're organized, things like that. Um, we want to invite your feedback. Um, so this is primarily to um, help you have input on the Bicentennial, um, invite your input on the Bicentennial and how we might celebrate it. Um, and then I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have about the, uh, the Bicentennial in Kenya. So give me one second here. Okay, hopefully you're seeing my screen. Yes, I see thumbs up. Okay. All right, Bicentennial update, this is it. Maybe. Ah, there we go. Okay, um, so we have been working uh, diligently for almost two years now um, to plan our Bicentennial. We have been uh, mining historical content. We've been mining archival content. Uh, we've been working on budgets. Uh, reviewing peer milestone celebrations. Um, so we looked at Amherst, um, Hamilton, um, Trinity College just celebrated their bicentennial. Um, so interestingly, when I was in the archives doing some of this work, I was going through our centennial celebrations and there was a letter that Kenyon had sent to Amherst uh, asking if they could visit Amherst and review their centennial celebrations. Um, they're two years ahead of us. So uh, 1922. Um, and so we did the same thing uh, 100 years later. We went to Amherst and said, hey, tell us about your um, bicentennial celebrations. Those were during the pandemic, um, but still we learned a lot. Um, as I mentioned, Hamilton and Trinity just had theirs last year. So we've been doing that kind of research. Um, we have been organizing staff members and volunteers into a planning committee. So I'm one of three tri-chairs. Um, we also have Molly Willow Vogel, um, who's class of 2000. She is the Director of Advancement Communications, um, working out of both the Advancement Division and the Communications Office. And we have Howard Greer, who is the Director of On-Campus Events. So really, we're putting the combined um, resources of the President's Office, um, which Howard works out of, Communications and Advancement to plan our Bicentennial. We've made a few decisions, um, but as I mentioned, there's plenty of room for you to help shape our bicentennial celebrations, and we want that um, input from you. So um, we have made the decision to celebrate the bicentennial over calendar year 2024. We do most things on an academic year, um, so this is a departure from that, but it gives us a couple of opportunities. One, it lets us celebrate um, the bicentennial and all of our existing academic events and so um, and alumni events so reunion weekend family weekend homecoming honors day commencement can also all have bicentennial um, touches to them it also allows us to engage two um well an extra set of student classes um 
So one more class year um, in our celebrations, and it allows us to spread our resources over two um, fiscal years. So that's a, a benefit for us. You can see some of our guiding um, principles here. Um, I'll note that we want to celebrate all our history, not just the warm, fuzzy moments in Kenyan's history. We want to tell all the stories. Um, we want all of you to plan events. Um, so we want students to plan events. We want departments to plan events. We want um, alumni regional associations to plan events, but we want them all to look and feel like a cohesive bicentennial celebration, um, even if they're not planned um, from the same team. Um, and then lastly, we've laid out our bicentennial ambassadors, and I will tell you more about that um, now. So we had three, um, I had three um, primary goals for the bicentennial ambassadors program. Uh, one was to recognize and celebrate the work that our volunteers have done, oftentimes over decades. Um, so one, celebrate uh, and reward the Kenyan faithful, those of you who bleed Kenyan purple. And um, two, I think that we will sell out uh, Reunion Weekend 2024. I'm quite certain that we could do that with fours and nines alone, but I don't want our bicentennial to merely be an enhanced celebration for the fours and the nines. I want all of you, um, all of you that can make it um, to be there. So we have put all the bicentennial ambassadors in our first tier of registration. If you want to stay on campus, that means staying in a dorm. So you might not want to stay on campus, but if you want to stay on campus, we will have room for you. If you would prefer to stay in a local hotel or an Airbnb, I would make those arrangements immediately. I'm already hearing from people that it's hard to find um, local hotel accommodations. Um, so we will sell out. We will have almost unlimited room for people to be on campus. Um, but if you or people be on campus, not housed on campus, that's where we're going to have a limiting um, factor. Um, so if you want to stay on campus, we're making room for you there. We're inviting some other groups, um, classes of 1974 and earlier. We've put them in our um, first year of registration so they can celebrate um, with us as well. So um, I wanted to celebrate you. I wanted to make room for you at reunion weekend. And then lastly, we wanted to pool um, ambassador gifts to form a challenge to alumni. Um, so we have asked each of you to consider a gift to the Kenyan Fund this fall um, or a commitment to be paid by June 30. We're going to leverage all of those um, gifts as a challenge to alumni this spring. So part during our giving day, there may be one-off sort of challenges, but we want to use the gifts from ambassadors to invite and encourage other alumni to support the college. Um, so those were the three um, three objectives. You can see that we have um, invited all of our current and former um, board members, members of Alumni Council, the Kenyan Fund Executive Committee, um, our partner boards, and the Kenyan Women Giving Back Steering Committee, so our higher level volunteer um, boards. We've also invited our award winners. Most of these awards are for volunteer service. So if you were not on the board of trustees, but you were a class agent for 20 years and you received the D. Morgan Smith Award, or you were on um, several reunion committees and you received a distinguished service award, um, or you volunteered for admissions or in career and received an award, we have included those um, volunteers as well. So in some ways, this is our all-star team of volunteers. We are not asking a, a ton of you from a volunteer um, perspective, but in one sense, um, it is our, our most dedicated um, volunteers. We do have a couple of um, categories of ambassadors that are not volunteers or may not be in volunteers. Um, that includes the Alumni Council Humanitarian Service Award winners. Sometimes those individuals have service to the college, but all of them have service um, to larger humanitarian um, organizations. We've also included our honorary degree recipients. Um, the college has chosen to honor them. So um, high-level volunteers, honorees, um, and award recipients round out our um, bicentennial ambassadors. So what's expected of you? Um, first and foremost, and I put this in the letter that I, that I have sent you, um, you do not have to do anything um, to be part of the Bicentennial Ambassador Program. If you want to sit back and watch um, and not participate in any activities, that is completely fine. Um, we are recognizing what you've already done for Kenya. Um, so thank you. Um, and this is just a small way of recognizing your um, efforts and celebrating you as part of our Kenyan history. We would, however, um, like you to be ambassadors 
um, as the name implies, for the bicentennial and encourage your friends and classmates to participate in bicentennial activities. We're not gonna send you lists of people to call or anything like that, but if you're going to one of our regional celebrations um, or you went to a regional celebration, make a post to Facebook or Instagram. Um, if you're on a class, Zoom meeting, share that you're going to the event or that you went to the event. Um, if you participate in our effort to collect Kenyan stories, um, you might share what that story was um, with your friends and invite them to share their stories as well. So we want you to amplify our message um, and invite your friends and classmates into the Bicentennial. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be um, pooling ambassador gifts um, to, to fund a challenge. So again, you don't have to make a gift. You don't have to volunteer in any way. This is for what you've already done for Kenyon, but we hope you will continue to do, um, to do things for Kenyon. So that is the ambassador program. We will have two marquee celebrations as part of our Bicentennial. So these are our two main tent poles, if you will. Um, Reunion Weekend 2024, which I've invited you to, um, and we are making room for you um, in special um, celebrations just for ambassadors during the weekend. Um, and then we have Founders Day. Founders Day is a day, but we're stretching into a weekend because we can, and it's our bicentennial. Um, that will be our primary celebration on campus. So for faculty, staff, it will also be the successful conclusion of the Our Path Forward to the Bicentennial um, campaign celebration. So we'll have campaign celebrations that weekend as well. Um, John, sure there's a question in the chat. Um, what's the percentage you, of alumni who are ambassadors? Oh, hmm. Let me do the math real quick. Um, yeah, that was just less than five percent. Less than five percent. We have a we do have a very robust volunteer base. Um, and we are looking at probably 60 years of our um, living history, but it is a fairly, um, fairly small group percentage wise, so about 3%, something like that. Thank Georgia. you. That was my question. Just always in considering like the volunteers, right? Like what, how many people does it actually make up? Um, and just thinking about how those people, right, engage other people as well. Yeah, it would be about 3% roughly. Um, so, okay. Thanks for um, highlighting any um, questions that pop up in the, the chat, Colette. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to tell you about Reunion Weekend 2020. I'm going to tell you about the whole thing, but I'm going to start uh, with Reunion Weekend 2024. Um, we have sort of three guiding principles for the weekend. Um, first and foremost, we want to showcase our beautiful campus. We have one of the most beautiful college campuses in the world. Um, we are um, pulling out all the stops to make it beautiful. We're, we are walking around next week with maintenance to point at things that need cleaned and sandblasted and um, trimmed um, to make sure that our campus is beautiful. Uh, we will be illuminating Old Kenyon. We may or may not illuminate Bexley. Um, we have an estimate. We're trying to do both. We'd like to do both. Uh, the picture that you're seeing is the illumination of Old Kenyon for President Decatur's inauguration. Um, it's hard to see, but in the windows, there um, are letters that spell out a message. It says, welcome Sean and family. So this is 2013-ish. Um, and that process of putting transparencies in the window and backlighting them to spell out a message to the new president is actually our oldest consecutive tradition. Um, we have done that for every president that we've inaugurated. So going back to our second president. So we've been doing this for roughly uh, 190 plus years. Um, so we have been annoying students who live in those rooms for a really long time each time we inaugurate uh, a president. So, and of course, we will have inauguration this, this spring. Um, so we are lighting up our campus. Um, tons and tons of um, work is being put into to this. We will be draping Kenyan and purple, so purple banners, um, everything you can imagine. Uh, signposts, um, just making Kenyan look beautiful. Um, so highlighting our campus, we'll be offering spaces of um, tours of new spaces. So we've added a lot. Um, many alumni will be returning for the first time in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so we will have an opportunity to show them um, uh, new spaces on campus. We'll also be inviting them to participate in a scavenger hunt that will sort of spread you out across South Campus. So really inviting people to explore the campus um, and learn more um, about Kenyon and really just show off our beautiful campus. So that's sort of theme one um, for reunion weekend. We have two, two questions in the chat, Sean. Okay, yeah. Thanks, so, Colin. Yeah, the first question is, will our recurring monthly donations be, be put towards the ambassador pool in addition to any new gifts we make? 
Yes, absolutely. Awesome. And then the second question is all ready for a reunion weekend. The Holiday Inn Express in Mount Vernon is showing no rooms available. Um, is Kenyon holding the rooms there for the weekend? We are holding, um, yes, we are holding a small number of rooms, and some of those rooms will be available through the registration process. Um, I It is not as many as I would like. They will go quickly. Um, so, um, yes, we are, but unfortunately, there are just not a lot of hotel rooms in the area. In fact, one of my, my moonshot dreams for the bicentennial, um, and this harkens really to our centennial, I wanted a presidential debate. Um, I wanted... Uh, you know, to get our two presidential candidates to campus um, for a debate. They frequently host those at colleges in Ohio because Ohio is a battleground state. Um, I thought that would be amazing for our um, centennial. President Harding um, was supposed to attend. He was an Ohio um, president. He was supposed to attend. He died in office um, before the vice or before the centennial, but his um, widow accepted the honorary degree posthumously. I don't think we've had a former president at Kenyon since Gerald Ford um, came, I think, in the 80s. So, um, But the reason that we couldn't, um, among probably some other good reasons, but one reason that we couldn't was it requires 30,000 um, hotel rooms within a 30-mile radius, and we did not have that. Um, so um, that was not an option. Hotels are very limited here. Um, so yes, we have some blocked out, but they will go quickly. So um, all right. I'll keep going. Um, so we're going to make our normal reunion weekend events fun. Uh, they're always fun, but we're going to add special touches to them. So parade of classes, but perhaps led by a marching band. Um, we've talked about having someone on horseback saying this will do dressed up as Philander Chase. So um, just fun little touches for the, the weekend. We're going to have a big bicentennial block party um, Friday night. We are inviting all of our faculty members and emeritus faculty members um, back to campus. For that celebration so that we hope you will be able to interact with some of your former um, former professors and meet some of our new new professors. Uh, we will have a concert uh, that evening, not not Walk the Moon or anything that big, but a good uh, good regional band um, playing that evening. I'm working on a, a special keynote address, inviting a distinguished alumnus um, to deliver that keynote address. I'm very excited about that um, and hoping, fingers crossed, that he says yes. Um, we will probably have multiple musical performances, so one um, Friday evening, um, but perhaps something Saturday afternoon, um, and perhaps at other venues around campus. So um, there will be music and celebrations and dancing. Um, we'll have our reunion soiree, um, which will be really be our bicentennial gala. Um, if you've been to one of our soirees in the past, um, they're down the um, tone track, which sounds blah, but we make it beautiful. Um, and uh, we're really pulling out all the stops um, for that celebration. You'll want to be there. So if you're coming to reunion weekend, make sure you sign up for the uh, for the soiree. And then we're going to line everyone up in purple swag in the shape of a K on um, Ransom Lawn and take a picture from Pierce Tower um, for posterity's sake. So just some fun fun things like that going on during reunion weekend. Um, so um, showcase our campus, um, have fun, and then we really want to celebrate our history. Um, as part of the weekend, and actually, and part of the entire year, and I'll tell you more about about that. But we are in the process of working on a historical timeline down Middle Path. Um, so probably 20 stations, um, approximately every 200 feet. You would start at Old Kenyon, 1824 to uh, 1834. You would work your way to Bexley in 2024. About every 200 feet, you would stop and look at a um, station that would depict. Um, that era, that decade at Kenyon, um, perhaps linked to multimedia content. Um, so um, imagine 1964 to 1974, you might see the GE Quiz Bowl halftime um, video. So in 1964, Kenyon's um, Quiz Bowl team, which was a big um, primetime television show um, in the 60s and early 70s, um, our quiz bowl team made it quite far, advanced five rounds, I think, um, and we were invited to show a video. Um, unfortunately, there's no sound. Uh, the way that the program worked was the, um, the narrator read um, the script over the video, so the video does not have sound, but we have that video. So as you are interacting with this content, you also could see videos 
um, perhaps recordings of alumni talking about the events, um, other content uh, that would be linked to it. So we were putting a lot of um, time and energy into um, creating that timeline. There will also be one on the uh, on the web as well. So sort of chronicling Kenyan's history. You will want to study those because we are going to have a big trivia uh, contest in April. And that will help you out if you review the uh, the timeline on um, on the website. So um, we will have a bicentennial book for you to sign. So this is all the matriculation book. Um, so everyone that participates in the bicentennial students, faculty, um, alumni um, will have the opportunity to sign their name to this archival book that we will um, keep for posterity's sake. So. That's going to be fun. We'll be bringing that around the country as well. So as we're traveling um, to events um, in Chicago and New York and DC and other cities, um, we'll be bringing that book with us and a little bit of Kenyan's history. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you all the details, but we've got a fun um, event concept planned um, for the major cities, and including bringing President Kornfeld. And then we will have lots of fun events planned by regional associations. Um, I don't know how. I don't know how many of the regional association events the Bicentennial Book will appear at, but it will be at lots of um, locations um, and events, and hopefully you'll have the opportunity to sign it. Um, we will have archival. Is there, yeah. Is it okay to hop in for questions throughout the Absolutely. Go ahead, Katie. Um, okay. How do we inquire about getting the book to our location? Just ask you, or I'm yep, curious. Just ask us. Yeah. Okay. Just ask us. I think we'll... Uh, I know, I know we're going to be, you're in Boston now, Katie? Is that right? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I know we're coming to Boston, so um, we okay. will bring it to you. Um, Perfect. So that's um, that's fun. We, we want to create some um, archival um, value for the college. So, um, and I'll tell you about another project that will, that will do that as well. Um, we'll be um, offering historical tours of campus. Um, so in addition to our new spaces, historical tours of campus, um, and then we're really undertaking a very significant project to collect Kenyan stories. Um, I know every alum has um, at least one story, uh, a funny event, a professor that changed uh, their life, um, some realization later in life of how Kenyan contributed to their career success. Um, maybe you met your spouse at Kenyan and you want to tell the story of how you met her on freshman move-in day. Um, so we're going to have really a, a dedicated effort to collect those stories. We're going to publish many of them um, in a volume that will be available for purchase. And that will be, um, that really, I'm hoping that will be a glimpse um, for future generations into what life was like on the Hill between 1960, 1950 um, to 2024. So sort of our living history of Kenyon College. So that's another way that we want to celebrate our history. Our, um, our bicentennial is just not, it's not just about Kenyan's history, it's about your history. And we wanna celebrate uh, that too. So that is Reunion Weekend 2024. Um, Founders Day, I'll tell you a little bit about that. That will be, um, as I mentioned, our primary celebration on campus. Um, we will have a keynote address by Lord Kenyon, which is kind of fun. So um, Lord Kenyon was our, an early benefactor, his great, great, great grandfather, something like that. Um, and of course the namesake for Kenyon College, um, his great grandfather or grandfather, great grandfather, I think, returned and gave the keynote address at our centennial. And I believe his grandfather came back at our sesquicentennial. So kind of a tradition um, to have the family back to um, to talk to, to Kenyon. So Lord and Lady Kenyon will be here. Um, we'll, of course, have a campus wide celebration. Lots of custom swag. I'm, I've got a whole section on swag because we're doing really cool stuff with, with swag. You're going to love the merchandise that we have coming out. Um, and then, of course, I mentioned we'll have our campaign celebration. So that will be Founders Day, um, Founders Day weekend. We pulled lots of fun archival content. Again, I want to reflect your time at Kenyon. So we've gone through um, revelias and scanned pictures by class um, of everything you can imagine. Singing groups, fraternities, sororities, teams, um, you name it, clubs. Um, and we're really trying to, to bring a lot of that content, curate a lot of that content to you. Um, oral, uh, or sorry, um, collegians are all available and scanned online, um, as are a lot of other content at Digital Kenyon. Um, so if you Google Digital Kenyon, you can find all the collegians from your time at Kenyon 
um, and lots of other content. So we're trying to bring our archives to life and share it with you. Um, what would a Bicentennial Canyon be without books? There will be books. So in addition to the Bicentennial book that you will sign, uh, I, I guess we have one for you to sign, one for you to read, and one for you to help write. Um, so you'll sign our um, matriculation Bicentennial book. Um, we have published Kenyon at 200 Place and Purpose. Um, these are, I believe, at the printer now. It is a beautiful coffee table book chronicling Kenyon's um, 200 year history. And then we will publish um, a collection of Kenyan stories. Um, that, John, uh, let me excited about John. Yeah, Murray, jump in. All right, wait. So is is the Kenyan at 200 place and purpose? Is that the thing that David Lynn was editing? That, that is the thing that David Lynn okay. is working on. Yeah. So that will be, I believe that will first be available for sale through the bookstore um, probably in um, April around the inauguration. I have not seen all of it. They are keeping it closely guarded. I can't even get a peek at it. Um, I have seen a little bit of it though, and it is beautiful. Very well designed, high quality photography, um, good essays from alumni and faculty members. Um, so it's really a, a neat book. Um, so that will be available. And the oral history at the time that you give your oral history um, or tell your Kenyan story, I'm, I'm trying to use less formal terms. Oral history is perhaps a little too, um, uh, I don't know, formal um, for what we're doing, but um, we want to collect Kenyan stories and share this. So that will be available um, as well. And of course, we want um, to celebrate the Bicentennial all year long. Um, so we will, as I mentioned, be putting special touches on all of our events. Um, we will have inauguration um, right now, tentatively the week of April 13th. So there will be some special activities uh, around that. We're planning some throwback events um, on campus. So um, meals at Pierce were once served family style um, by students. Um, so you can imagine a night where you sit at your table and the food is brought out to you family style and you pass the platters around. Uh, that's one of the, the fun things we're, we're hoping to do. Um, Kenyan Day was a big tradition, this late 1800s to mid 1900s. Um, so several decades, there was a tradition of a spring um, track and field kind of event. So tug of war, sack races. Um, and so we're probably going to bring back something, something like that. I'm not sure it'll be exactly that, but um, so just sort of some fun moments um, to uh, throw back moments on, on campus. Um, the stars are aligning almost literally uh, for Kenyon. We will have a solar eclipse um, on April 8th, and we have purchased solar eclipse goggles for everyone, um, and that'll be sort of a fun, fun event. So just fun occurrences that are happening during the year we're throwing in as part of our bicentennial. Uh, and then we'll have a special day of giving um, around the um, inauguration as well. So watch for that that week of April 8th. We'll be rolling out our challenge, uh, the Bicentennial Ambassadors Challenge that week, perhaps earlier um, to some smaller segments, but that will be our big push um, for gifts. And we're actually hoping, if any of you were part of 43022 Day, uh, we are hoping to have a another day um, that week where all of our regional associations gather um, on the same day or perhaps even that week. Um, so that will be a fun activity that we'll be looking forward to. Um, and of course, our giving day will be will be part of that. Also, in the vein of 43022, everyone loves, which we did on April 30th, 2022. If you're not, uh, if you weren't part of that 43022, people love numerical significance. Um, so we are launching our bicentennial on January 8th, 2024, which will be 1824. Um, so if you like number coincidence, uh, there you go. Okay. Um, we will, of course, have regional celebrations. Alumni Council has been working on this. A committee of alumni um, council members has been putting together a playbook for regional associations. They are in the process of calling all regional association committee members. Um, we've had, during the pandemic, of course, we stopped all um, in-person and regional events. Post-pandemic, some of the regions came back strong and others did not so much. So we've got kind of this range of planning two or three events a year or two have not done anything since 2019. So we are trying to kickstart our regional associations again. We are putting together um, themed events. We will be sending swag that matches 
um, from the college to support those events. We're putting money um, up for the regional associations to grab to plan those events. Uh, so we're hoping that will be um, a way that we can bring the bicentennial to you throughout the year. We're gonna have a Philander's Flair. For those of you that like to collect things, this will be a collector series of buttons or pens. Think of like campaign buttons. You will be able to collect these buttons by doing bicentennial activities. So when you sign the bicentennial book, you will get a pen, a collector's pen for signing the bicentennial book, one at reunion weekend, uh, one for completing the timeline down middle path, uh, one for attending a regional event. So kind of a, a way that, A, a collector series, but, but B, a way to encourage alumni to participate in all the activities that are going on um, during the bicentennial. I'm working right now with faculty members to put together a virtual event series. I think most of them will be lectures, but some of them may be um, conversations with students or alumni. I hope to have up to eight um, recognizable names, Kenyan names that you would know. Um, so that should be fun working on that. And then of course, we'll have lots of social media engagement throughout the year. I'm almost done, I promise. It's getting long, but um, I told you we have lots of fun swag. And we have a ton of it. So imagine sort of throwback letter persons, uh, sweaters. Uh, that could that could be a, um, a kind of a throwback year item. We were going to do a historic t-shirt line. So um, all the famous Kenyan hangouts, uh, the Pirate's Cove, Dorothy's Lunch, which was the Pirate's Cove of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, the Village Inn, which is already done and will be at the um, bookstore available for purchase soon. Uh, Paul Newman, when he was at Kenyon, he had a laundry service. He was, he was an entrepreneur even back then. And he had lots of funny quotes like, um, if your laundry is not becoming for you, it should be coming to me. And he offered a free beer with every load. So you can kind of imagine what the Newman's laundry service uh, t-shirt might look like. We'll have some quirky um, t-shirts. I know not everyone knows um, the Middle Path Gates is the Gates of Hell. That dates back to the mid-1980s on the Phil Donahue show when a guest claimed that uh, Kenyon was one spot on a, a triangle on a map that opened up the gates to hell. It was something absurd, but the middle path gates became known as the gates to hell. So um, for subsequent junior generations. So imagine a sort of vintage hard rock shirt, um, sort of the gates of hell flames, kind of just fun stuff. Um, so watch for that. Like I said, the first, um, Items should be arriving in the bookstore um, soon. Uh, this, well, the next two weeks. Um, we've also have been um, set aside a lot of money for bicentennial projects. These are grants that you can apply for to plan events in your region. Um, maybe you have an idea for an event during reunion weekend um, or homecoming. Maybe you want to bring a group of um, um, that you were part of, a club, um, a fraternity or sorority back to campus for a reunion. You can apply for um, special project grants to fund those activities. Um, we have been, um, I will give you the link in just a, just a minute here. Um, actually, Colette, would you grab that link and put it in the chat for everyone? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. So you can click on that. You can get more information there. We've had probably 20 submitted so far. Most of them just came in in the last two weeks or so. We have approved three. So we received one from the music department I think this is going to be kind of a fun event on campus. It will be music simultaneously happening all over campus. Um, so there might be a quartet in front of um, Ross and another in front of um, Ascension. And everywhere you you walk on campus, you will hear music um, and they will overlap. The sounds will overlap. Um, they will all be Kenyan musicians and original pieces. So that was approved by the Bicentennial Advisory Committee. Um, we will have a poetry reading at reunion weekend. So Wade Newman, who ran the Kenyan Poetry Society, um, I think founded it while he was at Kenyon and then ran it for years, um, will be joining us. I know Daniel Mark Epstein has said yes, and we're inviting a couple other poets back to reunion weekend for, for this poetry reading. And then lastly, we will have a scavenger hunt uh, that will be on, um, take place in Marriott Park. Marriott Park is actually South Quad, the gates if you stop and read the, um, the inscriptions, it, it notes that you were entering Marriott Park. George Wharton Marriott, not related to Marriott Hotels, um, was an early benefactor for the college. And so the college, the grounds, um, the streets um, all reflect sort of Kenyon's early benefactors. So we'll have this um, scavenger hunt that will 
will happen during reunion weekend, also during homecoming, and then we'll do it again during Founders Day for students. So, and you'll get a piece of Philander's flare uh, button, commemorative button for taking part. So that's it. I I went on for for quite a while. I want to stop and invite your feedback. So what you heard that resonated, what feels like it's missing, questions that you have. Um, if you at any point want to reach out to the tri chairs, you can email bicentennial at kenyon.edu. It is um, distributed to the three of us. And you also can use the link in the chat to, um, to submit a special project. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen share here. And we'll just have a question and answer, a, a discussion, brainstorming. Katie, go. Um, my question was in response to when you were talking about the Alumni Council is putting together a packet for the regional associations in mm -hmm. order to think about. Um, and I saw some email kind of, or something came out about the regional call too. I'm wondering if you have a timeline of when regional associations can expect to get that material in order to plan accordingly. I do. Um, so we are planning to distribute it to all regional association members, sort of the draft of the playbook. Um, it has the event concepts in it. It has funding um, information in it, best practices. We've tried to kind of make it a, um, as close to a plug and play um, event as possible. Um, and then just some other guidelines for um, bicentennializing other events that you might, you might have. Um, so in advance of the November 16th, um, regional Association quarterly conference call. So the regional association members get together quarterly. We'll be distributing it to um, to the regional associations prior to that. Um, Katie, you should hear from a member of Alumni Council uh, pretty soon, the next day or two, I'm reaching out to you to kind of, uh, I, I know you've been active, but they're reaching out to all the regional associations to share the playbook, get your feedback. We want your help making it better. Um, and just in general, kind of encourage everyone to be the regional associations to be active and plan events. So, so look for that in the next uh, week or so, really. Thanks, Katie. Tom, um, uh, you were you were talking about um, you know kind of um, going back with some of the the Kenyan swag, you know the the t shirts looking like they used to, and I just think it would be amazing if there could be some Bexley Hall uh, t-shirts okay. to um, honor our, our, our former uh, seminary. And maybe the people that live in that building might like to have them. I'm sure uh, they would. Too. They're so, going to be excited to, to move in next semester. Yeah. Uh, so sure. I, um, if there's anything I could do to help make that happen, I really like uh, to do that. Um, the other thing was, um, I got an email, uh, the email was addressed to everybody that was in my fraternity when I was at Kenyon, mm -hmm. um, that went out of business about two years after I left Kenyon. The email was sent by somebody in my class who actually wasn't really on our uh, 50th reunion committee. Hmm. And he said, you know, if we're ever going to see each other again, this is the time uh, to do it. And uh, there were some uh, good, good responses to that. So um, I, I think um I think it's something that's just in the genes of Kenyan people. They can feel something really special coming and they want to be uh, part of it. And then just one uh, quick practical question. Sean, I uh, have a meeting in my calendar next week for ambassadors. Is Is that new stuff for this group or is it a repeat for it, another it's cohort? an identical session okay so we, we know need... about half the people signed up that are signed up for the session next week are on the session tonight okay <laughs> so you do not need to attend both if you if you want to hear me talk about the bicentennial again I okay would... yeah, yeah. I, I was just wondering if you wanted reports from us by next week on what we're working on so. you're always welcome thomas <laughs> <laughs> that's right
Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Tom. Oh, and to, to touch on the, the um, fraternity reunion, um, that is something that we do all the time. We do athletic club, um, athletic team reunions, fraternity reunions, sorority reunions. Um, we have had program reunions. So if you want to get a group of your former whatever, uh, close friends from Kenyan together for a themed reunion, we do those all the time at reunion weekend. Um, so for example, all of our singing groups our singing groups on a four-year rotation, not all of them, but four of them are on a four-year rotation. We just did a reunion for fraternity last week. Um, we did a swim reunion earlier this year, which swim reunion, 450, almost half of our living swimmers came back for the swim reunion. So that was a phenomenal weekend on campus. Um, everyone that showed up at that weekend got what they came for, uh, including five and a half hours of remarks about Coach Steen at dinner. So um, we are doing those kinds of events all the time. I know we're planning a tennis uh, uh, reunion for um, November of 2024. So yes, if you want to get a club or a group together, homecoming and reunion weekend are the two weekends that we try to do that. So yeah, reach out to me, reach out to anyone, the APE staff, and let me know that you're, let us know that you're interested in organizing it and we'll help you put it together. Yeah, it's just one other quick thing. Murray and I were uh, texting back and forth when he was still here about um, you know, doing something, you know, for the, the drama club. Um, and if, if there would be a thought of, uh, having people kind of be hosts at, at buildings that folks might want to come, come back to some of us, you know, from drama might want to do the, the hill and, uh, and, and the Bolton. I'm sure we enjoy okay. doing that. So thanks. Murray has proposed a, um, I don't know if he's still on, um, but he- Murray proposed, left, yeah. Murray left, okay. He has okay. proposed that we do something with um, the Drama Club, uh, which is- Yes. Thinking about, yeah. so yes. I mean, years and years of that, and if the truth be known, um, he could do a one-man show of an hour, 15 minutes, whatever, whatever you want. I don't want to speak for him, but he could. Tom, have we missed anything in the in the chat? Yeah, we've had a couple questions come in during it. Um, the first question is: Are we doing anything to honor Gambier and Mount Vernon, who have held the school closely for two hundred years? That is a good question. Um, I am in the process of scheduling a meeting with the township and the city of Mount Vernon to talk about our bicentennial celebrations. Um, we have thought about the opportunity to invite Mount Vernonites um, to campus for a historical tour or a, you know, information session about Kenyon. We are thinking about perhaps refreshing our signage in Mount Vernon that points to Kenyon College that way. And of course, just making sure that, um, that they are coordinating with us on our major events so that they're not paving Gaskin Street while we're, you know, at reunion weekend. So um, yes, we are in the process of talking with them. I think there's another, um, so Gambier didn't really become um, Gambier until 1828. That's when we moved to Gambier. We started in 1824 in Worthington. Um, Old Kenyon was started in 1826 and finished in 1828 when the college officially moved to Gambier. So we have an opportunity in four years to do 200 years of Gambier. Mount Vernon, I think, is past its bicentennial. They're, they're older than, than us. But yes, we're, we're thinking about that. That's a, that's a great point. Another question is, um, there is a Coco Singers reunion, yes, and in Owl Creeks? There is a Coco Singers reunion. Um, I'm not sure about the Owl Creeks. I would have to touch base with all my colleagues um, about that. But yes, there will be a Coco Singers reunion in 2024. And then the next question is, so regarding the pins for each event, will it be the same pin for every event or like one different one for every event, if that makes sense? I It does. It makes total sense, um, I think. So if you participate in signing the matriculation, uh, I don't know, I keep calling it the matriculation book, the bicentennial book. We, we have three bicentennial books, so that, that never seems to do it, but I'm going to start standardizing my reference to the Bicentennial book. If you sign the Bicentennial book, you'll get a button designed around that activity. 
If you go to a regional event, you will get a button um, that reflects that activity. I don't know if we will have different buttons for each region. We talked about that. Um, we haven't nailed down the design of the buttons. It could be that there's also a different button for, say, a college-sponsored event. We're, we're going around to five, at least five, five to seven cities next year um, with President Kornfeld. We're bringing a little bit of Kenyan's history with us. So we're actually almost even a mini recreation of South um, Campus that we're bringing along with us, some historical content. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. We're we're nailing that that down, but I don't think at this point it would be practical to do a different button for each each region. Hopefully that answered the question. Then the last question um, that's in the chat is any way that the BFEC can have can collaborate for apologize if I say this wrong in advance, but asphodel plants to be available. Ah, yes, asphodel. The, the uh Yes, we have seeds for asphodel, which we had to get cleared with the USDA because it is not a native uh, species. Interestingly, asphodel doesn't even grow in this area. Uh, Meadow sweet with asphodel is sort of a poet's um, poetic license um, for other other flowers. I think um, maybe daffodils, if I'm I'm right. I, I did the research on it at one point. So um, asphodel is actually native to the I believe the Mediterranean uh, area. So. But yes, we're going to have asphodel and maybe daffodils. I've also wanted to do um, cuttings off of uh, the weeping beach, the upside down tree, so that you could plant your own upside down tree in your yard or other um, Kenyan trees. Seems kind of fun. So yeah, we're those, those are great points. We'll definitely have asphodel seeds. All right, we've covered the chat. Any additional questions? Anything you want to know about at Kenyon? Oh, Sean, uh, I'm assuming a special invitation will go out um, to all of the past the past presidents of Kenyon um, who are still living. That is correct. I am not sure if that will be an event at reunion weekend or if that will be an event at the inauguration. I'm actually speaking oh. with Odin tomorrow okay. morning. So we're working on it. Okay. Um, but but we're sort of nailing down what the inauguration looks like. Um it's it's slightly unfortunate that we have the inauguration um right before reunion weekend because some of the folks like President Decatur and President Odin that would come back for one don't want to come back for both. So we're sort of having to divide our audiences um, between those two those two weekends. Same with our board of trustees, which will be coming back for the inauguration. I was in an academic event, so we might lose some of that um, group for reunion weekend, but I'm hoping they'll come back twice. But yes, we, we will have some kind of Kenyan president's event when we do our regional um, events, we are going to be bringing a um, kind of a little pop-up um, displays. So you kind of pull them up and they have a pre-printed um, screen sort of, and we'll be doing one on Kenyan presidents so that you can kind of, if you go into those regional events, interact with um, past presidents and their histories and things like that. So. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. We're we're wrapping up a little early, um, but uh, you've been a great audience. I I told Colette, um, Colette, you introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, sure. My name's Colette. I am the advancement fellow here in the advancement office here at Kenyon. Um, I will be serving in this role from I started in July and I end in July 2025. So I'll be here throughout Kenyon's bicentennial. So, yeah, thanks for joining us, uh, Colette. And Mary, actually, I wanted to um, to introduce you real quick. Mary is our current chair of the Kenyon Fund Executive Committee. So we're happy to have her with us tonight. And for our next session, we also have a bicentennial intern. We've been engaging volunteers and faculty and staff and students um, in our bicentennial planning. Uh, we have a great intern that I hoped would be with us tonight, but it's actually Pierce Giving. Um, most of you don't know Pierce Giving, but it's now a new big Thanksgiving tradition um, in Pierce Hall, and Pierce Giving was tonight, so she could not join us, but 
um, you will have the chance to meet her in the future. Okay. Well, thank you. If you think of anything between now and then, you can email bicentennial at kenyon.edu and keep an eye out for our announcement on January 8, 2024. And there's also a um, bicentennial placeholder website up at kenyon.edu backslash bicentennial if you want to check uh, check that out. So, all right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great evening.